Good morning. For the IT security guru today, we have Mike Small, who works for Carpenter Cole, an analyst firm, and also ISARCA. It's a phone interview, so you're just going to get to see his face, but it's still a very interesting interview. I'm Mike Small, and I'm a senior analyst with Coppinger Coal, which is a European industry analyst with a focus on uh, identity and access management and cloud security. And so this, uh, in this interview, I'm going to be talking about um, uh, a recap of uh, 2012 from a point of view of uh, security and a look into the future in 2013. So first of all, was 2012 a big year for IT security breaches? So first of all, I, ha I don't have quantitative information on how many breaches there were. We won't be able to see this until reports like that from Verizon are published later. However, there have been many prosecutions, enforcement notices and monetary penalties issued by the Information Commissioner's Office in the UK. And these include a record fine of £325,000 for a hospital where disks containing patient data were sold on the internet, a penalty of £150,000 for the Greater Manchester Police where an officer lost a memory stick with unencrypted information relating to more than a thousand people linked to serious crimes, and a penalty of £120,000 to a council where sensitive information about child protection legal cases were emailed to the wrong people. There have also been a number of cases of hacktivism and a worrying trend towards ransomware where uh, the hackers uh, encrypt your information or hold your computer systems uh, uh, ran to ransom and to blackmail. And in this particular case, uh, extortionists from Russia encrypted patient data belonging to an Australian hospital and demanded 5,000 Australian dollars to restore access. So does this all mean that the IT security industry is losing the battle against the hackers? So in terms of IT security technology, there is just a continued arms race. As new kinds of security technology is developed, the criminals find alternative tools, tactics and procedures to overcome these. The challenge that needs to be considered is one against a much wider scope than simply technology. As long as criminals can make money at what they consider to be an acceptable risk, they will continue. And another particular challenge is the lack of a consistent law and enforcement of law across the globe, as well as the ability for criminals to process and bank their ill-gotten gains. And an example of the challenges that we see here are one which uh, was published on a SOFOS blog, uh, where the SOFOS, in co collaboration with law enforcement, uh, were able to trace the exact identities of the gang behind the coup face malware uh, and indeed find them on uh, Facebook and other uh, major uh, social networking sites without there being a chance of uh, a prosecution because of the particular geography that they were located in. So where does this leave us and what uh, outlook for 2013? So in my opinion, the single biggest threat is getting the owners and holders of information to recognize its value and their responsibles to look after this. What is actually needed is a much greater degree of information stewardship to take appropriate care of information. For example, I think uh, that many organizations need to change their culture to look upon information and to treat it more like money or other valuable assets. And uh, kind of the illustrations from Information Commissioner's Office show how there are this, this is true for too many organizations and the continued lack of care that is taken by people that work in those information uh, over information that they hold. 
Now this is exploited by the cyber criminals who often seem to be better at recognising the value of information than the owners and the holders. And in order to profit from that, the cyber criminals are continuously evolving their tools, techniques and processes to focus their attacks on the highest value targets. And they're doing this through uh, uh, what it what was called in 2012 advanced persistent threats. So organizations need to beware and to guard against these kinds of attacks and to prepare for when they do actually occur. And this needs a change of culture in the holders of information as well as the application of best technologies.